Hi, this is Prios and I'm a professional gambler. Today we will talk about apparently shocking cheating allegations in a five million dollar tournament. This is evidence found by Doc Polk, by the way. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised at all that things like this are happening, by the way. Actually, I'm surprised that it is not happening more often. Because when it's about big money, people are inclined to, to find an easy way to get it and to cheat. But let's see how, how, how this is all about and see what Doc Polk has uh, found out or uh, investigated. Let's go! A high stakes poker tournament in Las Vegas. Millions of dollars up for grabs. Cheating allegations are rocking the poker world. Did this player, Martin Cabril, mark cards during an event? Or was it all just a ruse? A few okay, this uh, already looked very suspicious. Looked like he made a mark into the cards. Filled with some of poker's biggest stars. But the spotlight was not on Phil Ivey. It was not on Dan Smith. But it was instead on Martin Cabril. This guy's antics were at least annoying, but were they sinister? Today, we take a deeper look. Al not happy with Cabrell asking for a count. Speculating, like there were a lot of discussions about whether he was marking cards. I mean, Al's had enough. He's over the antics. I think it's ridiculous that he's allowed to play in the tournament. Before we get going today, subscribe to this channel. <laughs> oh, sorry by the way uh, subscribe to mine too please <laughs> oh yeah also to my uh, to, to, to twitter and youtube depending on whatever you watch <laughs> okay let's go moving on by this point you've probably heard about this story through the thousands of posts across social media many of the threads on reddit or two plus two and of course, even the mainstream media outlets have started to pick up this story because cheating allegations with this much money on the line in a poker tournament with over $5 million to win up top, this is certainly something that's gonna garner some attention. Over the course of this $250,000 line <laughs> tournament at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas, Martin Cabril was acting kind of suspiciously and holding his cards and putting pressure on them in ways that you might think would mark the cards. And then he was also Look like, like some fishy things going on with his fingernails there. <laughs> Looking at players in a way that made them think perhaps he was checking their cards for markings. And so this mm -hmm. started to build over the course of the tournament where players began to get worried that there was potential cheating going on. We're going to show you some of the clips and break it down and get in depth into exactly what happened. He should do it in a less obvious way. I mean, this is amateur-like. And I guess... In case other people do something, they probably don't do it in such an obvious way. I mean, it for me it looks like very suspicious already. So let's continue with the video. Before we do, let's take a little backstory. Who exactly is Martin Cabril? My apologies to however you pronounce his last name. Martin has played poker for a very long period of time. If you go to his Hendon Mob, he's got results for over a decade, playing in many different tournaments around the world, although primarily he does seem to play at either King's Casino or in the Las Vegas World Series of Poker. Another interesting thing about Martin's play is he plays some very small tournaments, including a $350 tournament last year, and he plays in very large tournaments final tabling this $250,000 event. With 14 years of logged results in live tournaments, you would think if this guy was cheating blatantly, well, he probably would have gotten caught by now. But Martin didn't just play on the live felt. He also played a lot on online sites. In fact, I vividly remember playing with Martin under the screen name Gomir some years ago, where when he would sit, the games would build around him. He would frequently sit the highest stakes up the 200, 400, no limit, and frankly, he was likely the worst player at the table and games would build based on that. I'll add a note, I'm not 100% sure that Martin is Gomir, but I have some sources telling me that he is, so I feel fairly confident. We can see here a graph of his results playing online over the period of time where it was being tracked, and you can see they're not very good, losing most of a million dollars. Oh wait, shit, that's Luke Schwartz's graph. <laughs> okay, but it was... It was actually funny. Here we go. This is Gomir's. Well, not too different. 
Assuming this account is Martin, I'm very aware of the way that he played, which was loose, aggressive. It could also be the case that he wasn't cheating from the beginning because his results are terrible. And he also didn't make that much money um, over, what was it, 10 years plus? And yeah, I mean, they, these results are not factoring in the buy-ins, so he might actually be losing. So yeah, he might just have started recently because of money pressure or debt or whatever. ...and kind of wily, sort of crazy, and he didn't really manage to pull that off too successfully, at least online, but that is the kind of style of player that I know he is. Anyway, Martin has played a lot of live tournaments, as we saw before on Hended Mob. In fact, he also played in a 300k event, the Super High Roller Bowl, which he won at King's Casino recently, and he also played it in Las Vegas. I think he is close with the King's Casino owner. This also makes him more suspicious in my eyes, because yeah, I also hear some, some crazy stories about him. One is, I mean, that's not just a story. This definitely happened. Um, where uh, Leon was borrowing like, was it like one, two million from another player and then refused to pay him back, um, stating that he was drunk and that this was not a legal binding contract and he was not, uh, yeah, not, he didn't knew what, what he was doing anymore and therefore should not be liable for his actions and therefore is not paying the money. I mean, this looks very bad. Um, on someone like him who is supposed to be very rich and the owner of a big, well, um, yeah, uh, a big casino that is supposedly making a lot of money. Leon. With almost $12 million in live caches, Martin is certainly an accomplished <clears throat> live poker player. Oh, it's $12 million? I, I thought it was just like $2 million. So it's, it's a bit more than I thought. So it looks like he actually made money. But you never know how much of this... Um, was stakings and stuff. I mean, people usually don't hold all the money themselves, but they sell huge pieces, especially in bigger tournaments. So uh, if someone wins like prize money 10 million to, to pick a very high number, it might be the case that he's just having 5% on his own and the rest goes to the bakers. But what is his attitude like at the table? And this is where we enter Martin's strategy. Let's take a look. Who's I'm speaking with my friend Ola. Can you okay. be quiet? Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> my friend. You win. I think you After win. After you go all in, I think you win. He's trying to talk him into it. I think it. correct. Mm. I can't see many, most of your chips. Yeah, but I have more than you. Yeah, I have to know. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, right? I think it. Yeah. If it doesn't matter, why do you ask on everyone every hand? I don't know. From looking at a bunch of hands that Martin had played before and some hands he played in this tournament, Martin clearly likes to use speech play to try and get his opponents on tilt, make them uncomfortable, and make them make bad decisions. That's kind of his MO. I don't know what Martin's game is like today, but for a lot of players that might lack a little bit of technical expertise in the game of No Limit Hold'em, they can try and make it back in other areas by making their opponents tilt or making them uncomfortable. Well, this $250,000 tournament was certainly no different, and Martin wasn't exactly making friends. Trying to put your opponent on tilt in a massive high roller tournament? <laughs> Only a jerk would do that. Okay, so maybe I had one moment, but after tournaments, I tend to be very gracious whether I win or I lose. <laughs> I guess this was when he lost, right? <laughs> Ooh, uh, I think I'm going to make a discipline lay down on this position. But back to this event, let's take a look at a good example clip of what Martin was doing in hands in a hand he played versus Al De Carolis. Let's roll the clip. 1.2. Nope, Peter Brown never, never massaged the one table at the, at the poker table. 1.2. Massage for like 10 hours a day straight. Getting a, getting a massage for like 10 hours a day. Every Looks like he's taking a closer look at the cards of his opponent. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, more than strange, I would say. Single day oh, yeah. without pause. They're probably checking again if they're already in the money. They're not. 
11 places get paid. Maybe he's just uh, looking at his ship stack and trying to, to get an idea how much he has left. <laughs> Lul. Stand up. Oh. Makes the call. King 3 suited out of position. Interesting clash here. 2.8 million in the middle. I don't know. If somebody was getting that close to my cards, I'll put my chips on top of that. But I don't know what the rule is. Okay. Al moves all in. See that's six. Count to six. Can I get a count please? Do you want to be a jack off? I'll be a jack off. Can you to count? Yes, sir. Six. I'm count? No, no, no. Oh, if he has for a count, yeah, yeah. I think he has a repeat. It's, it's, it's two point six. It's two point six. Two point six fifty. While I admire the return of the jack off behavior. This is 600? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Six. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I say no. Thank you. Thank you. Al not happy with Cabrell asking for a count. Johnny, what was that? I mean, Al's had enough. He's over the antics. Win some, lose some. I often get accused of some sketchy editing here on the channel, and we do have to edit things down for the sake of this video. I cannot show you hours of live stream footage, but we can see a couple of things from this clip. We can see Martin standing up and leaning over to look at his opponents. Maybe chips, maybe cards, kind of unclear exactly what he's looking at, but it seems an unnecessary because you can ask the dealer how much they have, or once you have a reasonable view, you can tell how much they have. And both these hands are played on his side of the table. So it's not even a very far distance away. Yeah, very strange indeed. Away from his chips. So you can see this guy is annoying, standing up, getting people off their game, and generally unsettling people. And you can particularly tell this is happening to Dan Smith, who recommends that Al should be covering his cards with chips. I will say that if Martin could see cards in this hand, not playing it too ideal because while this jack eight bluff is nice on 10 7 4 4 ace this king three suited peel out of position versus aces with one pot size bet left behind not exactly a great poker play even if yeah but uh take into he sh should take into consideration that he might have just marked one ace and that he knows for sure after looking at the cards that his opponent has one ace but does not know the other whole card and therefore assumes that yeah, he is good to go to see a flop uh, knowing one of your opponent's whole cards is quite um, yeah, quite good if there's just one more card to go. If you didn't know their cards, but if he knows he's got aces, you really have to wonder what he's going for. This is not like deep stack cash. Yeah, he, um, uh, he has uh, no way he has all cards marked. Probably just had one ace mark or something. And he also already said that his technical poker abilities are probably lacking behind. For your in position with suited connector, in which case you could still lose a lot of money. I can say that personally. This is one pot size bet. Don't exactly know what he's doing. Later on at the table, Dan Smith called the floor to get some color ups for chips. Martin doesn't want to color up his chips, and there is a bit of an argument that breaks out between them. You can tell Dan is not buying exactly what Martin is selling with his logic. Floor, can we color up some chips? Yes, there is actually a schedule. Um, before then, I can't see a bunch of them because of the, the five Ks. Yeah. Thank you. I can't see many, most of your chips. Yeah, but I have more than you, yeah? I have no. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, right? I think it, yeah. if it doesn't matter, why do you ask kind of everyone every hand? I don't know. Because, I think it matters. Because they have smaller chips than me. I, I, do, I do that. It's okay. Everything for them to be happy, okay? Everything mm -hmm. for them. Well, it is. I, know, it is. I think it's pretty visible, but I agree. It's definitely not visible. Hendrik, I agree with you as well. Thank you. Yeah, so it looks like he does not have the best manners and tries to put his opponent off. Maybe that's part of his strategy. 
But yeah, not 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 sure what he was to wants to accomplish with that. But I would li like to ask Mr. Ivy for opinion. Mm. Okay. But I think he doesn't give a Ivy hasn't cracked a smile in three hours. <laughs> this leads us to one of the craziest hands that was played by Martin and one of the reasons why people are so skeptical of this. Let's look at a flop four bet with air against a different player who was bluffing the flop with a three bet. Check jams on you, you know, but but Al just said, you know what, I'm just all in. And then he said, if you want to be a jack off, I'll be a jack off, <laughs> you know, so... Fight between Martin Cabral and Alvin Carolas. I'm taking Al 100% oh. of the time. I'll, I would take Al against five Martin Cabral. <laughs> <laughs> Four of them would be too busy calling for the floor while the other one was getting beat up. Martin Rosier raising it up to 350. Cabral calling from the big line. Cabral checking on the swap. Martin Rosier collects. Sorry, continues for 235. And here comes the check raise. Yes, okay, small continuation bet, small check raise. Like, I'm not so sure I, you know, mm. Martin Rosen is the, the guy who's going to check raise. <laughs> he seems like somebody who's <laughs> not necessarily going to just be given up very easily. We'll see how he wants to continue here. Yeah. Wow, there it is. Also, um, in general, oh, sorry, I see that I'm a bit in the way and you can't see the flop cards. So what do we do about that? Uh, ah. Let me try to fix that very quick. Guess that's better now. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, with the pot to stack ratio, this just does not make any sense, to be honest. I mean, he, I think the, I mean, I'm not a no limit hold'em expert, but in general, on such a board, if you get raised on the flop and with not that much behind, where you can get the money in any ways on turn and river, standard should probably to always just call. And yeah, three betting is just like completely pointless. This is just. Like this hand with Ivy, where it was like three bet, four bet, five bet, or whatever it was, um, with air against air, where both people knew that no one has anything. I told you, I mean, he's not. So maybe that's just the read he made. Because, yeah, why should an, an eight come back over the top and not just call, for example? I mean, this seems to be more reasonable in my eyes. The board also is very dry. There's just one open out there and a few gut shots. No flush draw. Martin, Martin Rosian is not one to be messed with. Makes it 1.9 million. Action now back on Cabrell. <laughs> All right, Martin, what you got? Down to the final 16 players. The final 11 will get paid, so massive implications here. A misstep could be very costly. Okay, that's uh, until then. I wasn't wasn't that suspicious. It could just be that he just made a great read, but he's doing this, staring at hole cards. From a very close distance again, which is a kind of suspicious. And what what ace? Uh, what color had the ace last time? Let's see what was the other ace. Fuck! Come on, internet! <laughs> Don't let me down. Where is it? We are searching for this other hand. I wonder what these suits from the other ace were. Come we'll on. Do that. Okay, so maybe I had. Oof. Let's roll the. Where is it? Ace of Spades and Ace of Hearts. A little stand up. And it's the Ace of Spades again. Um. I think he probably has marked the Ace of Spades. 
I mean, I mean, at least it makes sense. Now he realized that his opponent has an ace for one card, which makes it, which when he only has one card left to to hit an eight. So, yeah. <clears throat> Clicks it back. Martin Cabrell out of nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, did you just see that? Wow. You also had to rebluff as an ace beats a king high. <laughs> if you don't watch much poker, you might think, so what? They were both bluffing. But to bluff for a four bet on this flop with this hand, it's just not something that you see very often. Now, also adding in some complexity here, once again, a player has the ace of spades right after a player had the ace That's of spades what I said. him before, when two, one hour before that, according to this guy on Twitter, Martin actually had the ace of spades in his hand and played around with it for a few minutes before okay. moving on. So. In theory, it would go that basically he knows that a player has the ace of spades, in which case he can't really have an eight because there's no eight that the player would be opening preflop. Ace eight offsuit probably wouldn't open. And then the suited eight to the ace is not possible because the eight of spades is on the board. So basically Martin would know that if he has the ace of spades, that he does not have a really strong hand. To be clear, that is a theory or an allegation, one that was highlighted by this play, this person on Twitter at Game I Know, with exact timestamps showing at five hours in, he heavily handled the Ace of Spades and then played those two subsequent hands against the Ace of Spades right afterwards. He posts three screenshots, one where he has the Ace of Spades clearly in his hand, and then two where he is against the player with the Ace of Spades and he's looking very obviously at their cards and chips. Do we buy this theory? Well, it's difficult to say. I think that if he really knew that the ace was Mar It would be also helpful to review older footage of him and if he's showing such a behavior as well. And if not, this would make things even look more vicious, fishy. <laughs> Marked, why would you call a three bet against a player that's in position where you know they have at least one ace? Of course, the kicker can also be another ace or a king or a queen, in which case you're still toast. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to me to peel with almost no stacks left behind. He already established the theory that he is probably an idiot and not good at poker. Behind with this king three of spades. In fact, king three of spades, it would be an especially bad hand to call with if you knew they had the ace of spades because you will even have your flush draw dominated a bunch of the time too. So uh, I, I don't really see how this is an indication in that hand. In the other hand, this is pretty goddamn crazy. You don't see flops with this kind of action very often, so I can certainly see why this looks suspicious. Then right after that, Martin runs another big bluff against a player where he asks how much he has and stares at his chips or cards for some time and ultimately jams with nine high, sorry, a pair of nines that turned into just one pair on a four flush board and gets a better pair to fold. Would you make that play if you knew your opponent didn't have an ace? Well, it would certainly be a lot more attractive, but do we know that he had even been dealt the ace of hearts? It's possible he'd never seen that card, although I'm sure an internet sooth will tell me otherwise. In one more clip of this day, we can see Martin clearly looking directly at Brandon Stevens' cards before deciding what to do again. <laughs> Why is he doing it in such an obvious way? It's such an idiot. Against him in the big blind. Now, first off, I want to say thank you for the Reddit user FireApe1971 who put these all together. It made it really easy to follow along. But this is from the non 
final table. This is just from the secondary feature table. So what could be happening here? Let's just go through a couple of things. First off, it is definitely possible that Martin is just a kind of splashy recreational player or a kind of splashy pro who makes lots of crazy moves. And when they look... Oh, he's just an idiot. Usually it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck. It is a duck. When they're accurate, they look great. And when they're inaccurate, he looks quite bad. That would sort of fall in line with what I've seen from him online. However, some of these plays are extremely good. Obviously, this four bet on the flop is especially weird to me. You don't see that very often. And this pair of nines turning into a bluff to get a queen to fold. Honestly, it's a pretty reasonable play, I think, with his hand. So I don't hate that idea, that concept, but it is still fairly sharp. That doesn't inherently seem super weird to me, given the situation. Uh, this king three of spades hand seems just bad, especially if you knew their cards. So I think it's probably most likely that the guy was just kind of playing crazy and getting in people's heads and making them nervous or, or awkward. I think it's more likely that he's cheating, but no definite proof. <laughs> Especially uh, the way he behaves and looks at cards and stuff. Uh, it looks <laughs> quite bad for him. But what are some things that could be happening? Well, of course, it's possible he is indenting the cards. The reason I don't think he's doing that is if you indent cards, the operator gets the deck afterwards, right? You can't unindent a card. So let's say I'm at a table clearly marking cards. Then the floor gets the cards and they see these markings. They're going to have footage of me marking it. I'm going to get banned almost immediately. So even in these moments where people show clips where he puts pressure on the cards or kind of like fingers them in certain ways, if he is marking them, it will be visible to other people. So it's very unlikely. But it looks like it's um, quite hidden as he needs to go to very close to the cards in order to recognize. And if it's, it's just a very small mark, and it's not necessarily that you're marking it. It, it, it could just that you are like, yeah, very anxious or under a lot of tension and then do that to your cards, not intentionally to mark them, but to, yeah, just because of emotions and, yeah, anxiety or excitement. And this is not definite pr proof. I mean, it looks kind of strange if it's only happening to aces yeah but still likely to me that's what's happening i think it's almost impossible or else he would have already been caught so the other options are he's putting some kind of ink on them i think it's yeah i think probably um the most pro the most probable uh thing how that went down is he wasn't cheating from the beginning of his career, but he might be in some sort of money shortage now and therefore started doing it or recognize that he has no edge at all, but has no other way to make an income. And that's why he went down this route. I mean, it's not definite proof, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah there's no hundred percent proof or evidence but it looks kind of bad for him in which case uh he would need some way to see the ink uh, he's not wearing glasses or anything so maybe some kind of contacts slash ink a bit far-fetched you probably would see the ink in some capacity i think it's just making small marks with his fingernails and that's also something where he can uh later um if he is um yeah, if allegations come up against him, he can say, hey, look, this was not intentional and I was just very excited or tilted or whatever. And that's why I treated the cards badly, but it was not to mark them. It's just a coincidence. And I know it looks bad for me, but it's definitely not true. I didn't do that. Uh, sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. Deniability is what he uh, gains. He's not using any um, anything that is 100% provable to be cheating because this can be happen for a lot of other reasons too, as mentioned.
That said, I'm not totally up to date on advanced ink using maneuvers to try and cheat in tournaments because I don't cheat in tournaments. Also, maybe possible you put some kind of grease on the card or something. There are some ways that people can cheat in these situations, but it would be hard for other players to not notice something like grease and, and some kind of invisible weird ink situation uh, is also somewhat easy to catch after the tournament too. So I think the only maybe plausible way this guy could be cheating, is it possible on this kind of you know, packed rail, someone behind can see the cards of the players. I mean, certainly when Al looked at his pocket aces, could probably get a pretty decent view of that from behind. It doesn't look like he has an accomplice because why would he behave strangely and do this stupid things if he has someone in the crowd who is doing the job for him? But if I was looking at someone with pocket aces, and trying to tell my friend he's got aces, why would he then call the three bet? It doesn't really make sense to me. I feel like this is probably not cheating. It looks like a one-man job and badly executed cheating. I'm sorry. He got, that just gets some additional information marking a few cards. Sorry, guys. I know you want the, the hammer, but doesn't seem... Yeah, you are wrong. I think uh, the hammer is what we need here <laughs> doesn't seem super likely to me given these hands martin's antics at the table are worse than anyone i've played with um people were speculating like there were a lot of discussions about whether he was marking cards um whether or not that's true playing with him is unbelievably unpleasant he's rude he takes the full 30 seconds every time and uh Last night playing with him, it felt like something not kosher was going on. Um, can't know for sure, uh, but I think it's ridiculous that he's allowed to play in the tournament. I think uh, this sums the situation up quite well. That said, it's for <clears throat> sure at bare minimum unsettling and annoying, and there's definitely some percent chance that he is in fact cheating. This brings us to the next point of the video. In my eyes, it's more likely than not that he's cheating. Video, which I think is really important. What's the percent chance someone is cheating where we have to then decide to do something about it? Because people seem to seem seem to think online that any chance of cheating we should ban someone. Uh, but but it also looks like the opinions can can differ a lot. I mean, it seems like he comes to the conclusion, but he's probably not cheating. And I would say it, it's more than fifty percent, probably even more than seventy or eighty percent that he's cheating. I mean, that's my opinion. That's a little bit complex, right? So, like, let's just say you think there is a one in a thousand percent chance based off something you saw. Does that guy get banned? Or is that too little? Or is does it have to be one in 50, one in 25? Where is the line in which we ban someone? Or are you simply innocent until proven guilty? That's kind of the debate here, right? Yeah, innocent until proven guilty is always good. And, yeah. The rule of law should, um, yeah, should count, and people should be innocent until uh, proven otherwise. And yeah, but I think this is uh, like a private entity running these uh, tournaments, and they can, for whatever reason, decide to, yeah, exclude and ban people. And this looks like a case where it's. Probably a good idea to get rid of this guy. I mean, it's not 100% certain that he's cheating, but he's also an asshole and annoying other guy, other people who might not come back. So you, it's not a big loss if you get rid of this guy. Should this guy get banned because he might be cheating, but we can't really see how or why we have no proof. But at the same time, he's doing weird shit and he's making people unsettled and he might be cheating. What's the line? What do you guys think? What's the line for when we should ban people? When I woke up and saw Twitter, I saw outrage across the board. People wanting this guy's head on a stick. People being absolutely certain he's a cheater, he's a scammer. All this, that, and the other. I saw lots of posts, even from people that I respect in the poker community, weighing in. People like Andrew Robel, who weighed in to talk about this guy, saying that essentially this guy should be banned. I'm not disagreeing with Robel's take that this guy is annoying and people don't want him in the tournament. In fact, he tweeted about how if people took a vote in the high-stakes tournaments, they'd probably all want this guy banned, and I can certainly see why. 
But I think what is happening here is more. I mean, this is like on the one hand, on the other hand, argumentation, because on the one hand, this is an asshole and a dick, but on the other hand, he's playing very badly. So even if someone is an asshole and a dick, if he's not playing good poker, you want him at the table, but you definitely don't want cheaters at your table. So, <laughs> yep. Martin is trying to make his opponents uncomfortable with an illusion he might be cheating. I don't know why you would want to do that. And I mean, that's just very bad for your reputation and everything. Nobody probably will do this on purpose. I mean, maybe it's different in whatever country this, this is, <laughs> the, the flag, but yeah, I, I don't think anyone is doing this intentionally. And staring at their cards makes them feel like he can see them, in which case people play badly against him, and then they, they get thrown off their game, and he gets edge out of that. I kind of think that's over the line either way to try and make people think you might be cheating. Uh, I think we should strive to protect our games and our integrity. But I also think that it's difficult from an operator perspective with what's the line and where we ban someone. He's um, quite diplomatic. Maybe he thinks that he's getting zoomed or something. <laughs> you have to have a clear cut policy. Please don't zoom me. <laughs> I do think that there is some debate on both sides here. Robel is tweeting saying that there's multiple videos of him marking cards. Okay, well, has the World Series Poker looked at the decks? I would assume that's something that they do. I doubt they just throw those decks away, right? I assume someone at some level at the World Series is going to... Yeah, but it's like very small marks. I mean, you probably only see it when you know where to look for and do a very uh, thoroughly um, inspection of the deck. And I doubt that this is done every single time. And even if you see these small fingernail marks, I mean, what you gonna do about it? This is not definite proof or something. And it could also be from another guy. Check that. Oh, this would be funny if you see him doing that, but you, with another player, just marks other cards and completely throws him off as he reads. Them for marks. And if there are no marks, what do you do? If someone is just being really annoying and threatening or creating an illusion of cheating, what do you do? I guess you could just ban them. I don't know. One last thing here before we go. I know it's popular on the internet right now to call this guy a scumbag, cheater, <clears throat> piece of shit, stealing money, whatever. And I'm definitely not saying he's innocent. I really don't know. But I do find it kind of funny that I get attacked for all of my videos I've made along the years where I talk about things and I even say that this is my opinion or these are allegations or... Uh... If you're very annoyed with this guy, I mean, he's not looking that strong. Could just pass him up <laughs> in front of the casino and give him a slap in his face and tell him to stop. Maybe that helps. <laughs> yeah, obviously not advocating for that. But yeah, that's what, how some people <laughs> would uh, manage this situation. <laughs> Uh, you know, essentially give the backstory and my opinion as to why, and I'm the evil bad guy for all those takes. But this guy with no proof whatsoever of actual cheating, rather just video. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah I mean, and I would not say no proof at all. I mean, definitely not. Yeah, I. This is very, very suspicious. The least. where we see him acting weird and looking at people's cards yeah that guy's for sure a scumbag cheater and that's fine for me that's fine for me but for you doug different level of due diligence i just gotta say there th th these kinds of things are gonna have people on both sides and personally i think that it's good to get those opinions out there we need people to be trying to help make sure that games are safe but i also think that assuming that this guy is 100 percent hi yeah all good um just going through this footage yeah, it was a very, uh, yeah, I, I, this sounded very um, interesting and it actually is. Cheating just because you see weird clips where he's doing weird shit. Well, we've seen some weird clips before and... Yeah, but this looked like this is all from the same tournament and this is, these are other people. Uh, I, I would, it would be very interesting if he did this in the past too, but I'm definitely too lazy to search through BSOP clips, but maybe someone on Reddit who by the off chance watches this video 
like the 100 views I get. <laughs> Maybe someone does it. And also uh, put the link in, in my video or somewhere where I find it. Yeah, we're never going to solve some of these things. That's for sure. In summary, this was a, a cheating, right? The one he showed. I'm pretty sure it was. The reasons that we think Morden is cheating is that he does make some questionable impressions on the cards and then also does stand. This is so. I mean. I mean, I, I'm not a crook or something, but if I would do something illegal or ch cheat, I would at least try to make. does not make it that obvious. This is just. This guy must be an idiot. ...over and look at them directly. These things are both red flags. We also exactly. see hands that he plays extremely well and accurately with some moves that are uncommon against a player that had one of the cards that he has. The argument against is that he also plays some hands badly, like with the King 3 of Spades against Aces. Also yeah, I think he just overestimated um, his skills there and thought that... Would help him way more of the card information he got. Come across your stream and maybe I can help you out. <laughs> no, no, you don't need to help me out. Please stop. So there's a classic human emotion where when you're strong, you try and act weak. When you're weak, you try and act strong. When players are cheating, typically they try and do it in a sly way so they don't get caught or draw attention to themselves. This is anything but that. He is purposefully drawing huge attention to the way he is looking at the cards. This would not be the normal way people cheat. To do it so brazenly in a way... Uh, true. But maybe this guy's just an idiot. And he does it the first time. That's my uh, take. That will certainly make headlines. And then the other argument against cheating is that... He has not been banned from the World Series or arrested. If the World Series of Poker found cheating, you have to imagine they would... Yeah, I mean, this is just indicative evidence, nothing 100% um, bulletproof. So why arrest someone who is not... where you don't have enough evidence against. But yeah, it's, it's looking strange. ...would do something like that. And I'm sure given that the fact that this story is now a national headline, I have to imagine they're taking this seriously and looking at these decks. I hope. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you for joining. Hope you found this one interesting. question is if this is put in inventory or something, but you know exactly at what time this was used, and I doubt that, to be honest. And even if it is looked closely upon, it's still no proof. I'll see you again soon. Yeah, I think that we are on the end of the stream as well. This just in. No, no, not another one. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube as well. Check out my other YouTube channel. And yeah, like, subscribe, share all the good things. Thank you. Bye-bye until next time.